Good morning everyone and welcome to Midweek Holy Communion on today, February the 25th. Time is marching on, isn't it? And we will soon be into March and uh, spring is nearly here now. I hope you're enjoying this lovely uh, mild spring-like weather that we're having at the moment. And I hope you're also pleased with the uh, good news we've been hearing about the possibility of uh, this lockdown ending uh, before very long and getting to, back to some semblance of normality before too long as well. So uh, let's begin our short service this morning, shall we? We meet in the name of God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. A moment of quiet before we have our confession. Lord Jesus, you have shown us the way to the Father, but we have turned aside from your way. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, your word is a light on our path, but we have walked in the darkness of our sins. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the good shepherd leading us to everlasting life, but we have not listened to your voice. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now the collect for today. Let us pray. Almighty God, whose Son Jesus Christ fasted forty days in the wilderness and was tempted as we are, yet without sin, give us grace to discipline ourselves in obedience to your Spirit, and as you know our weakness, so may we know your power to save. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. So now today's Gospel reading. And today it comes from Matthew chapter 7, beginning at verse 7 and going through to verse 12. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Ask, and it will be given to you. Search, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened for you. For everyone who asks receives, and everyone who searches finds, and for everyone who knocks, the door will be opened. Is there anyone among you who, if your child asks for bread, will give a stone? Or if the child asks for a fish, will give a snake? If you then, who are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give good things to those who ask him? In everything you do, do to others as you would have them do to you. For this is the law and the prophets. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Those words come from the famous Sermon on the Mount, which occupies Matthew's Gospel, chapter 4. 5, 6 and 7 and has some of those amazingly famous and wonderful words in it. But I want to focus this morning just briefly on the last verse of that gospel reading, Matthew chapter 7 verse 12. It's a verse that kind of stands on its own <clears throat> with no real obvious link to what comes before or what goes after. Do to others as you would have them do to you. In everything do to others as you would have them do to you. That's kind of the sort of conventional wisdom, isn't it, that our parents probably taught us, or we learnt at school. It's the kind of wisdom that pretty much everybody would agree with. Very uncontroversial. Cutting across all kinds of different religions and beliefs. But of course, much more difficult to put into practice than to actually agree with. And it's a kind of another little summary of the law. 
Jesus liked to give little bite-sized summaries of things, and he gave one very famous bite-sized summary of the law. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind and strength, and love your neighbour as yourself. That summarises the whole of the Ten Commandments. And this little verse is a kind of a summary of the second of those great commandments. We all know that we should love our neighbours as ourselves, but that can sometimes sound a little bit vague. Um, what does that actually mean in practice? Well, Jesus', Jesus little summary here in Matthew 7 verse 12 turns that commandment, love your neighbour as yourself, into something very practical. And Jesus says, do to others as you would have them do to you. And that's pretty straightforward. No one can misunderstand that. Do to others as you would have others do to you. And it's sometimes a very helpful thing, I think, to uh, whenever we meet someone or hear about someone who's in need, is to put ourselves in their position for a few moments and try and see life as they're seeing it. And then let's suppose you know, we come across or hear about a single parent who's trying desperately hard to bring up several children in a one bedroom flat, struggling to put food on the table and trying at the same time to homeschool them at the moment. Put yourself in their position. What would you like, if you were them, what would you like other people to be doing to you? Or suppose we hear about a refugee fleeing from persecution in, a, in another country or fleeing economic hardship. How do you think they feel? Put yourself in their position. How would they like to be treated by other people? How would you like to be treated if you were them? Or if you were a homeless person living on the streets, sleeping in a, in a shop doorway every night, how would you want, want other people to be treating you? If you were a recently bereaved person, how would you want to be treated by others? If you are a hard-pressed, stressed, exhausted NHS worker or key worker, how would you want other people to be treating you? It's sometimes a good idea to try and put ourselves in, in the other people's position so that we can get an idea of perhaps how we should be treating them, how we can actually do to them as we would like to be done to ourselves, how we can love them, our neighbours, as ourselves. That would make a good Lent challenge, wouldn't it? I dare say you've, everyone's decided now what you're going to do for Lent or uh, what you're giving up or what you're doing in addition, in addition to your normal activities. But how about this? You know, every day of Lent, if we, whenever we were to meet someone, just to ask ourselves the question, how would that person like to be treated by me? Do to others as you would have them do to you in everything. Do to others as you would have them do to you. There's a thought for you. So now we have our short question and answer creed. Do you believe and trust in God the Father, source of all being and life, the one for whom we exist? We believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Son, who took our human nature, died for us and rose again? We believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Holy Spirit, who gives life to the people of God and makes Christ known in the world? We believe and trust in him. This is the faith of the church. This is our faith. We believe and trust in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, now we come to our intercessions. So let's pray together now. Heavenly Father, we pray this morning for all those who remain affected by the coronavirus pandemic. We continue to pray for those who are ill with the virus. We pray for those who work for the NHS. We have prayed for them continuously throughout this whole time and we believe you have answered our prayers for them. But we continue to pray for them now because for them this crisis is by no means over yet. And we pray for all key workers as they continue in their work serving us. And we pray also for all those involved in the increasingly large-scale rollout of the vaccination programme. Lord, in your mercy, 
hear our prayer. We pray also this morning for all the preparations that will be taking place in the next week for the return of all pupils to school on the 8th of March. We pray for teachers and admin staff, governors, parents and pupils and all who will be involved in what is again a very large scale event. We pray for the children and young people and students of this nation that they will come to no long term harm as a result of missing so much of their education. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And for the rest of us, we pray that you would give us patience as this lockdown is gradually eased. Help us not to want to go too quickly and to continue to abide by the government rules and guidelines. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And further afield, we pray for all the various flashpoints around the world where violence and war are commonplace or where there are needs like hunger, homelessness and disease. We, play, we pray especially for the nation of Myanmar following the military coup. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we pray for any we know in any kind of need, for those recently bereaved, for those facing any kind of difficulty in their lives at the moment, praying that God will be with them and give them his peace at this time. And in the quiet of this moment, we name those we know who are, who are in any kind of need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And lastly, we pray for ourselves, that we will always strive to do to others as we would have them do to us. Help us to be increasingly sensitive to the needs of others and to understand what it is we can do for them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And now the peace. Since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us access to his grace. The peace of the Lord be always with you, and also with you. And now we move on to the Eucharistic prayer. And again, as usual, if you'd like to join in with the responses, if you know them in the right places. The Lord is here. His Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is indeed right and good to give you thanks and praise, Almighty God and Everlasting Father, through Jesus Christ your Son. For in these forty days you lead us into the desert of repentance, that through a pilgrimage of prayer and discipline we may grow in grace and learn to be your people once again. Through fasting, prayer and acts of service, you bring us back to your generous heart. Through study of your holy word, you open our eyes to, the, to, to, these, to your presence in the world and free our hands to welcome others into the radiant splendour of your love. As we prepare to celebrate the Easter feast with joyful hearts and minds, we bless you for your mercy and join with saints and angels for ever praising you and saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. How wonderful the work of your hands, O Lord! As a mother tenderly gathers her children, you embraced a people as your own. When they turned away and rebelled, your love remained steadfast. 
From them you raised up Jesus our Saviour, born of Mary to be the living bread, in whom all our hungers are satisfied. He offered his life for sinners, and with a love stronger than death, he opened wide his arms on the cross. On the night before he died, he came to supper with his friends, and, taking bread, he gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. At the end of supper, taking the cup of wine, he gave you thanks and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Father, we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross. We remember his dying and rising in glory, and we rejoice that he intercedes for us at your right hand. Pour out your Holy Spirit as we bring before you these gifts of your creation. May they be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. <clears throat> as we eat and drink these holy things in your presence, Form us in the likeness of Christ <clears throat> and build us into a living temple to your glory. Bring us at the last with the Blessed Virgin Mary, St. Lawrence and all the saints to the vision of that eternal splendour for which you have created us. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom, with whom and in whom, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. Blessing and honour and glory and power be yours for ever and ever. Amen. Rejoicing in God's presence with us now, let us pray as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, Redeemer of the world, grant us peace. And now, as usual, I will take the bread and the wine on behalf of all of us watching this morning and... For all of the congregation of St Lawrence Eastwood. Another post communion prayer. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. Now the final prayer and blessing. Christ, give you grace to grow in holiness, to deny yourselves, Take up your cross and follow him. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. So thank you very much. 
once again for joining me for this short service of Holy Communion uh, on this Thursday midweek. And I uh, wish you, the, wish you uh, a good day and hope you stay safe and well. And remember to keep following the government guidelines until we are finally uh, out of this problem altogether. And I will see you again soon. Bye for now.